What's up guys, Jonathan here. Today we're gonna to define sales, what it is and what it definitely is not. And this is important because there's times where I devalued these skills in my life and it's really part of who I am. Like I can trace back to when I was a kid how I used to be willing to engage in conversations and I wasn't afraid to like ask for money and there's just different things that happened over my life that I naturally jump into some of this stuff. But there was also times where with the way people would talk about sales or a salesperson and, and, and the way that they would characterize that person, it would make me devalue those things. And so I would manufacture how I showed up. And part of my belief in when it comes to sales is it's just something that I'm not only skilled at, but like I have a lot of proclivities that make it something that I can lean into and do really well. And thankfully I'm now at a place where those skills are highly valued. You know, the, the person that I work with and work for, he really values my skills and it's been very representative of my life. And I can look back and see, oh yeah, these are the types of things that I was into. And so when I look at that and I see, man, like this is something that I can do really well. Why did I not value it over the years? And it usually has to do with how sales was defined, how it was presented, how society looks at it. And so if we can kind of break down some of those barriers we can actually see sales as a very valuable, a very good, a very honorable thing. And that changes how we show up because a lot of times if like sales is portrayed as something negative, as something that is bad or not desirable, but it's also something that we're naturally inclined towards, we can have like a, a rub inside of our identity and that can cause a lot of internal friction that makes it hard just in general to go through daily life. But also, you know, when it comes to men and sobriety, which is like a huge reason I even make content, um, you know, I've had all my times with making content and stuff, and I've really just come back to like, you know, I just want to help men in sobriety because this being able to, to work in a career in sales and in just when I owned a business, like understanding sales, getting better at it and marketing and those types of things, like what I learned is like, those are very valuable. And a lot of people, when they, you know, men, when you go to like rehab, when you get out and if you have a family and other, like you got responsibilities and it's like a lot of people go back to low skilled jobs or they go back to environments that are just not good or conducive to your health in sobriety. And the cool thing about sales is you start interacting with people. It's a higher income role. You start learning it. A lot of places have like training programs where they teach you how to do it and like they value you. It changes how you feel about yourself, but also your earning potential goes up where you're less likely to have financial issues in your road to sobriety. And that's just really powerful because I see so many people that go back to those lower paying, low skill jobs or back to their old environment. And they end up just being back in the same place because they can't make ends meet. That makes it difficult. And so you're trying to willpower yourself against an environment that's, you know, it feels like it's working against you. But if you change your viewpoint and you look for something like in sales, I think that's a huge value piece. So we're gonna start by defining it, like what it is, what it is not, kind of talking about the history of the word. Because when you start to embody, like, like look at this and embody this type of definition of sales, it will change how you feel about it. It'll change how you look at it. It'll change how you value it. And it'll also make it a more viable thing for you to use as a career um, for income and just basically really creating a lifestyle that's conducive to long-term sobriety. So uh, sales. Um, I don't know exactly how Old English is pronounced. But if this came from Latin, it would be pronounced salon. And uh, I studied Latin back in the day. It's Old English. But the, the real key here is like when you look at the word like sell, the old versions of it, what it actually means is like to deliver or to give. So when you look at like what sales is not, it's not swindling, stealing, manipulating, cheating, or unethical gain. It is problem solving, activating change, motivating, challenging norms, and it's ethical gain. And that goes back to back in the day, like when you look at the history of the word sales, what it actually means is to propose value of what you can deliver and then asking for an exchange of money. So the onus is actually on the person selling, not on the person giving the money. Like the point of selling something is that you can deliver the thing that you're proposing the transaction for. And so when you look at the marketplace, like the world, like the whole concept of a marketplace is that everybody has different things to offer 
And each person that is looking in the marketplace is not going to go through the time, effort, energy, and all that to provide the thing that they're looking to purchase. So like if I go buy a car, my other options are I could go figure out how to make a car. There's a lot of stuff in that. So therefore I exchange my dollars for this thing that would be a lot of work and effort for me to receive. And so if I wanted to go buy a car, I go through the sales process, the transaction process. I go try to find the car. I look at it. I evaluate it, what it's worth and stuff like that. And I transact. But the whole point is that I'm not going to go through the process of making a car. So when you have a marketplace, the idea is that people are bringing things to the marketplace and people are establishing value and exchanging money, which is a store of value for that thing. And so when you look at the idea of sales, the onus is on the person selling the thing, right? And so a lot of times when people think of sales, they think of the used car salesman. They're like, this person is selling me, trying to sell me a thing because they want unethical gain. Okay. So they want this down here, unethical gain. They want to cheat me out of my money. They want to manipulate me into doing something because they want what they get out of it. They're stealing from me because when I get the thing, that I'm getting, like it's not going to work anyways. Um, swindling, and that, the movie I think of is Matilda when they put like sawdust in the oil and they use the drill and they attach it to the odometer and go backwards. If you haven't seen it, that's one of the scenes. Like they're 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 trying to set up to where they are uh, now, like creating the value of the car. They're they're manufacturing, manipulating what the value of the car is, making it look like it's more than it actually is. And that's what a lot of people think about with sales. Well, here's the reality though. Like we are now, yeah, sales is not this. We are now in 2024, dude, like you, social proof, man. Like it's, you can't really manufacture it anymore. So like when you see a bunch of bad reviews, you know, that's people reaching out saying they're experienced. So you can't really hide behind that stuff anymore. But also like, Yes, people may do that, but there's a human psychological tendency to always evaluate the negative and remember the negative over the positive as a way to avoid conflict. Like it's it's really like just a way we act as humans. We, we want to avoid loss more than we look for ways to increase gain. So we're always naturally going to remember more of the bad stories. People are more likely to tell the bad stories. Um, as humans, we actually want people to validate our bad experiences. So we're more likely to do things that increase validation all of those things, the, the, that's why we hear a, uh, a large disproportionate amount of stories of like people experiencing someone selling them something bad. And actually, if you look at the derivative of the word, it like over the course of time, like it adopted the negative things of like selling your soul to the devil, like all that. It adopted those meanings over time later on that wasn't the original meaning it just started being used for different things like that so it kind of warped the meaning of the word and that but that's how language works is like people will start to use it and like if you think about selling your soul to the devil it started getting more um more use during the growth of the church and so more people took it as a religious uh you know religious uh, uh, analogy and then then that expanded and so so that started to take over some of the meaning of the word sale, sale and sell and when we look, if we, you know, I know we're going to go in kind of deep, but this stuff is important because language matters. How we say stuff, how we frame stuff matters. And I spent years like degrading or not valuing my skills, but like being able to do certain things for a business, which we'll talk about in a second, is really important because if you can solve those problems, you can get rewarded pretty well from them financially. Okay. So that's what sales is not. So like th that's not what sales is. Sales is problem solving. So like now in today's economy, you know, what people know is they have a lot of options. So like they think when people are going to go buy something, they think they're going through the options. But what they're really doing, whether they say this or not, is they have an internal problem that they want to solve. And the role of the salesperson is to help them understand what problem they're trying to solve. That's the first piece. Most people are like... They, they don't really know the problem. They just know something's not right. And so our role as a salesperson is to help them understand how to solve that problem. We're also activating change. People, uh, people are very much like when you talk about physics, object at rest tends to stay at rest until acted on by another force. Most people are not like they have to experience a certain level of pain before they will motivate into change. And so our role is like, dude, if someone's finally taking the time to say, you know what, I think I need to change. 
dude, it is our responsibility. Like, uh, it's our responsibility to help activate that change if they're the right fit for what we do and we can solve their problem. There's some motivating in there, right? There's some, there is a little bit of pushing because at the end of the day, we're trying to help someone increase the quality of their life. And so there's a little bit of motivating quality for that. That's where like a little bit of charisma, a little bit of like, uh, like interest and, and empathy of the person and, and what their life is actually like is very important. Um, we're going to be challenging norms because again, like people are more likely to avoid change. They'd rather just kind of deal with what they have because the pain of change may feel like it's greater than the pain of staying the same. So we are going to be challenging some norms, some ideas. Um, this is a place I'm growing in, in my sales career. Like I did a call yesterday and as I was talking, like I was really trying to push the guy a little bit and just say, Hey, look like, you know, like you guys need to change. Like we got some pretty serious problems here. And I was challenging the norms of how he thinks. And it was a little bit frustrating because, you know, didn't close the call, but like deep down, I understand now, you know, at least having been in sales for long enough, like one of the issues, like the reason that that person didn't do it is because we challenged some of their norms. And if, if that person is not ready to accept it, they're not going to buy. Right. And you can kind of see we're starting to get a little bit deeper. Like we're really talking about human interaction here, not just like the transaction of money. Um, and it is definitely an ethical, ethical gain. So like when you are in sales, you're a, re what we call a revenue generating, uh, you're in a revenue generating position. So you are interacting with someone who doesn't currently pay you the, it takes more work to get a customer than to keep a customer. Um, I owned a gym for eight years, and this is 100% true. It takes a little more work to get someone in and get them to start. It takes way less effort once they start to keep them. And so when you are on the front side, so a revenue generating role, you are going to increase the potential of your pay way more than if you're on the other side, because the other side is ultimately the fulfillment. And those are usually lower skill things that can be taught. And that's like I was telling you, saying earlier, there's nothing wrong with the fulfillment side of a business, but like that's normally where you have to start low and you work your way up, right? And there's not, again, there's nothing wrong with that. Some people, that's what they want, but it's, there's a ceiling and that ceiling is only broken through by like usually like tenure or skill development. Whereas if you're on the other side of the business and you can learn the skills of generating revenue, that's revenue that the business did not originally have. And like you get rewarded quite well for that. So there's definitely some ethical gain there. So when we look at sales, like that's really what it is. And when we talk about just like, you know, this framework, when you start to realize like, Oh, this is a very valuable skill I have. Like when I was like six, I remember we would do yard sales and like we would go through the house and we would pick out all the stuff we just didn't want anymore. And like we would go and I would sell all of the stuff I took and start selling other people's in my family's stuff that morning, like it'd be like a Saturday morning, first hour or so I would sell all my stuff and then I would start selling theirs. And then like, as I look back and reflect, it's because I took an active role when people came up, ask them like, how you doing? Like, what are you looking at? Like, you know, do you have any interest in any of this stuff? Like, and I wasn't like trying to get them to take, like to give me money right away. I was going through the process, the sales process of like, Hey, how are you doing today? Like, what are you looking for? Is there something that you're looking for? Is there anything here? Like I was interacting with them in a way where I was going down this process of understanding, you know, the person, you know, what they're looking for, how I could help them out. And that is, again, it's a revenue generating position. A lot of people, they take a little more passive, like when they think of sales, they think it's like salesy, right? They think they're like trying to like swindle someone or steal or manipulate or cheat. And so they take a more passive role because that's how they, like it, it's really just a reflection of how they perceive themselves. Like they perceive themselves as being a swindler, a stealer, a manipulator, a cheater. And so they don't do it. But like when you start to change what you believe about how you define sales, it changes how you show up because you now are an on, in an honorable position you care about people, you problem solve. And like, it's funny, I have a sales call coming up here in a little bit, and this is like reinvigorating me. And it's, it's hugely emotional. Um, and, and we as humans are emotional, like we transact for an emotional reason, like pain, there's a logical reason for pain, but feeling the pain 
is deeper than just the logic of it. There's, there's ways that it affects and impacts you. And if we as a salesperson can understand those things, we will get that person to buy. But again, we're, we're wanting to deliver, to give. We want to deliver a result. We want to give a result to them, not just get a thing from them. And that's a very valuable role. Like, cause now you actually are caring for people. You, you're, you're trying to understand them. And then what I have found is when you start also defining this and a lot of the people I follow, the people who are really good in the sales world, um, they, they are all about like putting yourself in the shoes of the prospect and the prospect is just the person who could be a customer, but they're not a customer yet. They're just really big on like understanding this person, like understanding their problems, understanding what, what impact those problems are having on them so that you can understand how you can have a different impact. And that is a higher level of change. Like, okay, you, you yard sale, you come in, you buy this thing, you take it home. Okay. There's not a lot of impact to that unless it's something you've been looking for for years. So if it's like a memorabilia thing, a collectible thing, and man, you finally found it, like, do you put a high value on that? So there's a thing, right? Then there is like an outcome. So like, oh, if I buy this thing, I will now have the thing I need to achieve this result I've been looking for for a long time. You know, when I owned a gym, that's a lot of what we did is, you know, someone had been trying to get their fitness habits going. They tried to like be a part of this thing where their health was moving in the right direction. So they bought this gym membership or that program or this meal thing or this shake program, just all this crazy stuff. But they, they weren't wrong in looking for those things. They just thought each one of those things was going to give them a better outcome than they currently were having. They thought, man, if I do this, I'll finally get consistent. I'll finally get to the place where I'm no longer struggling. I'll get to the place where I actually look the way I want. And, and deep down, when you when someone's looking for a physique, they're really looking for like a self-confidence thing, right? So so the outcome, that's the next level, but then the impact. So with the person with their health, like the impact is, man, I just feel like I don't even have energy to play with my kids. Like it's impacting how I'm influencing my children and I'm concerned about their health and I don't want them to be where I am at 40 when they're 40. And I realize the impact of how I'm living my life is affecting how they're going to live their life when they get older. That is a higher level change when we get deep down into the impact that the problems they have are creating. And so that's the work of the salesperson is to understand the impact, right? Now, you can't do that if you think you are showing up to a, an activity. So like I have this sales call here in 20 minutes. If I thought I were showing up to that um, call thinking I was manipulating this person, cheating them out of money, like stealing from them because what I'm charging and what we deliver is, is out of alignment, it's incongruent, and I'm not giving them anything. I'm not here to actually help. Like very likely, number one, I'm probably not gonna close it, right? But the other piece is, that person is going to perceive it because there's an energy exchange in sales. It's not the type of role, like I said, you know, you're on the revenue generating side, there's an energy and a personal state that you have to be in that gives you the best likelihood of an outcome that you're looking for. But like on the other side, if you are not in the right state or mindset, that person can feel it. Even if it's digital like this, like you guys are watching this video and like there's an energy that's going out that I'm putting into this. And then as you watch it and interact with it, you feel a certain way. Like if that doesn't move you at all, like if there's no change of energy, like a, a relationship where I'm trying to give something in this where you can see that there's a potential difference and maybe you're like, you know, I want to make that change and this isn't, if that doesn't exist, it's very unlikely that anything's going to happen, right? So, so that's the other thing is why this is important is if you don't have this right attitude, it's going to be very difficult to show up. And a lot of people that I know that they try sales, they try like, they're like, you know what, I'm going to take this sales thing seriously. I'm going to try to start doing it. They think of sales tactics. Like what's the, what's the phrase? Like, how do you overcome this objection? And like, you can over overcome objections all you want. Like you can give some logic to it of like, well, yeah, that I see the objection, but you got to do this. But like people don't, people don't make 
decisions and change based on the they, they may build up with logic but like it's really an emotional switch because they're changing their state they're changing their current way of behavior that they they are overcoming these things that are norms and they're like hey i need to do something differently and get to a place where i'm finally able to get these results but i got a lot of these things that are in place that if i do this I'm going to have to deal with all these other things, right? So, like, that's an emotional change. You have to have the emotional decision to say, I'm going to move forward and accept the logical problems it's going to cause. So, that you have to exchange energy for. You can't just show up and be like, okay, well, this is what we do. This is how much it costs. You're just an order taker. You're not engaging in the process. And, and something I'm growing in is really leaning into that, is leaning more into the emotional side and I think for me, like I understand, you know, the business that businesses that I'm doing sales calls with, cause I own that type of business. Like I work with gym owners. I used to own a gym. I understand it. So there's a lot of logic, but what I'm realizing is like part of what I, I am growing in, in my sales skills is the challenging of the norms so that we can activate change. Like most of the objections, the reasons I haven't closed call lately calls lately is for whatever reason, there's some sort of logical reason of why they don't want to tip over. There's some sort of logical holdback. And if they have a, a, a logical reason why they're like, well, I can't do this because of X, Y, and Z, but those reasons are not, are not big enough because you see that you can actually solve their problem. Then somewhere along the way, the emotional triggers were not there. And again, this is ethical if you are addressing this person and they're the right fit. So like when we do sales calls, we have an application and we look at them and I spend about a good 15, 20 minutes out of 45 just to understand if they're the right person at that person. At that point, if we realize they're a good fit, everything, everything that happens after that, like we're trying to get that person to change because if we can change their beliefs, get them to emotionally adopt like a slightly different belief, even if it's just a little bit of reasonable doubt that can tip them over. So that is what sales is, is, is understanding people and keeping them from being stuck in their current problems, dealing with the pains that they're currently doing. Cause humans are really bad at that. Humans are really bad at just suffering for one more day. Like we will do that stuff. We will just suffer one more day. And then long-term what happens is you just keep doing it. And you finally you get down the road and you're like, Oh, maybe this time would be different. Well, not, not necessarily, but if you can get them to change and you deliver those people love you, man. And so when I sold my gym, I had a bunch of people come up to me and like basically crying and they were just sort of like, you are the person that got me to start here. And that is the impact the salesperson can have is like, you are the person that can actually get someone to tip over. If you do some of this stuff, you're not going to last very long. And, and, and a lot of people like get worried about being perceived as this. Nah, when you do this stuff, when I follow up with people, even when they say no, when I reach out to them, when, when I interrupt their day and stuff like that, no one has ever been like, I hate you, go away. They're, they're appreciative because I'm showing by continued follow-up, even if I didn't close a sale, that I care, that I care about their problems. I want their norms to change. I want them to see the results. So just want to encourage you guys, like, that's what sales is, man. It's a high-value role. Um, and I'll be honest, like, I'm learning and growing in it still, but I've been doing some form of sales all my life. And when I own my gym, like it's my primary role is marketing and sales is a primary thing that I focused on. So I just want to encourage you, like if you're out there and you're like, man, I'm just not making enough money or I don't want to go back to the same environment. Do I encourage you look for a sales position, like just search sales position places where they have training programs because they can teach you how to do it. But also like, I just think if you're early in sobriety, having something that's teaching you something new gives you something to do is also extremely powerful. It begins to shed the old identity and adopt the new one because you're in a new environment doing something new. And I guarantee you those places, they know if they train you and you do really well, they'll, they, they value you because you have a very valuable role that if you excel, um, and it's my belief, it's like the 80, 20 thing, like 20 people in sales account for 80% of the results in any type of organization they will take really good care of you. So I just want to encourage you guys with that. Um, I'm on a plane here in a little while, but I wanted to make sure I came in and made this video because if you can change, I, I had to go through this. I, I did not value myself and I had to understand how to begin valuing myself and my sales abilities 
to where I was like, no, this is something I want to pursue because it feels good to do something that you're fairly good at, but like, this is how we can actually help people. Like we have the skills, the ability. Um, so I just want to encourage you guys, appreciate you guys. Um, as always, you know, like, share, comment, but also like, if you ever just want to book a call, there is a link to just book a call. It's just a phone call just to connect. And if I can help you in any way, um, you know, it, it's, it's my, my goal just to help men in sobriety no longer go backwards, but build a better future. Right. So, um, that's it, man. Appreciate you guys like subscribe if you can. I'll see you later.